today's episode is gonna be a little bit different than what we typically do. <sighs> I gotta catch my breath. I just had lunch. <sighs> today's episode is gonna be a little bit different. Now, in the past couple of episodes, I've talked about my buddy Mike from WaveSpec coming by to talk to us about some brake rotors. Well, today's finally the day. So a little bit of background about Mike. So I met Mike, it's gotta be about two or three years ago now. And it was really through some random Facebook encounter, likely talking about brakes for my BRZ. And we kind of just hit it off. Found out out of nowhere, he was moving to New Mexico of all places, right? And what was it for? It was for starting up a brake company, right? Anyway, he's been a huge resource for me over the last couple of years as far as my autocross stuff has gone. He's helped me out on my BRZ plenty of times. And now he's really become somewhat of a personal brake consultant for me. Thanks, Wave Spec, by the way. Anyway, Mike is basically a jack of all trades. Huge, huge knowledge of wealth, especially when it comes to brakes and motorsports related applications. And he's such a great dude that he's come down here to talk with us about what brakes we should use for the 350Z. So, without further ado, here is my buddy Mike with Wave Spec. Hey, Shay, buddy. Good hey. to see you, man. Good to it's see you. Well. Yeah, absolutely. How, How you been? been? All right. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> I've been pretty good, man. Good um, You know, been busy getting parts and working on this 350Z. Awesome. And it came down to, to brakes, right? And yeah. You know, I've I'm no from I'm pretty familiar with brakes and specific, specifically in a in a motorsports aspect. And you know, you and I go back a little bit. A couple of years ago, I reached out to you to get a set of wave spec brakes for my BRZ, and uh, I've loved them ever since. And came to uh, needing brakes on the 350Z and you were the first person that came to my mind, so. Awesome, well, we appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, these, uh, these are, it's a really unique product. It's uh, definitely different um, and uh, has a lot of uh, competitive advantages. So glad you've been realizing those advantages on your BRZ and needing that with, uh, with the Z as well, so yeah. yeah. The, you know, I've, when people notice them, they love them, right? They see the, the unique wave design on them and they, they just ask questions. Where do you get them? I haven't seen these before. Yeah. And you know, it's a lot of great conversation. And then sometimes it leads to these questions that I just, I don't know how to answer, right? Some sure. of these guys talk about uh, reduced mass and what that does to performance and they get really scientific about it. And you know, those are just questions I don't feel comfortable completely answering. So yeah, what, yeah. what makes this product truly special? And you know, so, other than the fact that it looks cool. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, this, this, this wave design has actually been around for a long time. Uh, it was originally uh, done by Galfer in uh, the trial bikes for um, you know motocross and stuff uh, like that. So um, it's not a totally new idea. Um, and you know Audi uses it on the R8 uh, as well as their RS5. Um, so you know those guys do their homework. Um, but you know what what makes this product unique is that we're bringing it to you know more of the mass market vehicles um, that you know people track and people um, you know are looking for that competitive edge. Um, you know, we developed this design uh, from rally racing. And one of the issues with that is that you're limited to a 15 inch wheel. So you can't really do a big brake kit on there. Um, and we were trying to get more brake torque. And, you know, we'd seen, you know, that this has application, you know, in off-road and motorcycles. And you see it on bicycles oh, yeah. and all that sort of thing too. And so when we applied that to the rally car, uh, we found that we got a lot more brake torque. Uh, than we expected, and um, they also run a lot cooler. Uh, so this design, uh, you know, it's got the waves on here, so that reduces rotating mass, because uh, we're removing material from the outside edge, uh, which is actually quite significant with this design. And it also induces a lot of turbulence around the outside. Uh, so you get um, a turbulent boundary layer instead of more laminar flow, uh, like you do on a typical round rotor. And turbulent flow is better than laminar flow for heat transfer because you're getting more molecules of air that are actually coming into contact with the piece and able to pull the heat out. Uh, whereas with laminar flow, you're pretty much limited to what's really just touching the surface um, you know, as it's spinning. Um, and so <clears throat> by having the turbulent flow, it runs cooler. Now I know that a lot of people look at this and they're like, oh, well, you know, brakes are supposed to be a heat sink. Yes, they are, absolutely. But they also need to transfer heat out of the system. Um, so you, you do need the heat sink aspect, but you also need the heat transfer part too. So that's one of the big advantages of this design is being able to reject heat faster. So what's the deal with the three different models? Because I, I know that I have the, I believe these are called the black line, correct? Yes. I have the black line on the BRZ and I've been racing on them for about, like I said, about a year and a half to two years and they look like they're brand new still. Yeah. Uh, a single groove in it from the pads. They, you know, they look like a very high quality brand new part. But what's, what's the differences between these three lines? 
Okay, yeah, absolutely. So um, we've got our sport line, uh, which is our entry level. Um, and, uh, you know, it's actually, the, has all the advantages of our design, um, but it uses an industry standard metallurgy, uh, which is an SAE G3000 gray cast iron. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's a cost effective way to get into a wave spec rotor. Uh, they perform extremely well. Uh, we have uh, a, uh, a group out in Washington, uh, the Sturt Fish Rally School. Um, they actually have our original prototypes on one of their school cars. And um, they've been running them for quite some time. About nine months ago, they came to us and like, hey, just want to let you know your rotors are lasting twice as long as anything else we've run. And that's with, you know, our entry level rotor. Wow. Um, so um, it does, it's, it's excellent bang for the buck. Um, and uh, it's a good way to get extra performance, um, you know, at a, in a cost-effective package. Then when we step up to our silver line, um, it's got a little bit better heat transfer properties uh, due to the way it's cast. Um, it uses the same metallurgy as our sport lines, but it also features a silver zinc plating. So you get the rust protection um, on all of the uh, surfaces. Obviously, the pads are going to wear away, you know, the, the, the breaking surface here, mm -hmm. but everything else will be protected and, and so you won't get rust um, in those areas. It's really good for cars that are driven like, uh, you know, in the Northeast where they got, you know, a lot of, you know, yeah. salted roads and yeah, stuff absolutely. like that in the winter. We don't have to so. deal with that too much here. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> the nice thing about New Mexico. Um, and then we step up to our black line rotor, um, which was, again, developed from rally racing, uh, specifically stage rally. Um, one of the things with stage rally drivers is um, they tend to drag their brakes on the straights. And the reason they do that is to keep um, debris from building up between the pad and the rotor. So when they come in into the corner, the brakes are working. Ah, okay. Yeah, you know, I've, I've heard of them also using the brakes quite a bit to actually rotate the car. So For sure, sure for they, sure. They definitely rely on the brakes quite a bit. Yeah, actually they do. And so when you're dragging the brakes, you're not really giving them time to, you know, cool and all that sort of thing. And so you're dumping a lot of extra heat into them. And we found with the G3000 Metallurgy, it was good, but not quite as good as it needed to be um, in that particular scenario. I mean, when the, when the brakes are glowing cherry red, you know, bright cherry red, um, they, they will deform a little bit. Um, and you'll feel that through the pedal, that, that deformation. So uh, we stepped up to an SAE G4000D uh, metallurgy, which has chromium and molybdenum added to the alloy. And the chromium makes it a harder material, and then the molybdenum uh, increases its high temperature stability, so it doesn't have that deformation at those higher temperatures that you see with the G3000 metallurgy. Um, and it also has a higher carbon content, so it's a little bit stronger. Uh, once we went to this metallurgy on that rally car, the issues that he was having with the deformation vanished. So this can really take a lot of abuse um, that your typical street car just won't, won't see, you know. Um, but when you're, when you're full on racing and you're really pushing the car to the limits, this is the metallurgy that you're going to want. That's fantastic. Okay, so you know, that brings another question to mind. Sure. At what point would it be no longer advantageous to run a brake rotor like the black line or you know instead choose something like a big brake kit from ap or will wood or one of the other big brake kits sure sure i mean obviously you know um a stock size replacement isn't going to be the right answer for every scenario um and sometimes you just need more thermal capacity and that's really what what big brake kits are are designed to do is to increase your thermal capacity um, and that really comes into play on cars that are making substantially more power than stock. Um, you're running on really intensive, uh, you know, tracks like Laguna Seca, for example. You know, when you're coming down the hill, coming into that first turn, uh, you need you need some thermal capacity to, to be able to absorb all of that energy, you know, coming from 150 miles an hour, you know, into that into that turn. Um, so in cases like that, yeah, absolutely, you would want to do a big brake kit. Uh, instead of you know doing a you know, way spec rotor for that. Got it. That said, we will eventually be getting into that realm as well. So. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Put my name on the list. For sure, for sure. So it sounds like if you're doing any type of track day event, drifting for us in this case, or autocross, or even a light, uh, I think they call it... Uh, HPDE? Yeah, light HP... Is it ED? Or DE? DE. Uh, H high Performance Driving Experience. That's right. So a light, yeah. maybe high performance driving experience, then yeah. any of these rotors should exceed your expectations yeah for sure for sure yeah for for light duty stuff absolutely and, and you know i mean the black line like i said you know will take a lot more uh heat um so you know if you are pushing a little bit and you as you're improving as a driver and stuff like that 
um, you know, in HPD environments, you know, and you're making, you know, a little bit more horsepower than stock and, you know, you're, you're at the point where you're trail braking and all that kind of stuff and you're really, you know, working the brakes, you know, to maximum effect, um, you know, these will, will take that quite well. You know, again, once you get up into the really high horsepower stuff and, and all that, then, then you need to start looking at, at big brakes, but yeah, for sure. Got it. Okay. And then, um, what would be, you know, I've heard of matching a rotor to brake pads being a very important aspect of an overall braking package. Is there something that you would package really well with each one of these rotors or is it still up to preference? For the most part, it's up to preference. However, there is a caveat. Um, some of the more aggressive racing pads, um, they tend to be abrasive. And so they'll actually, you know, eat up rotors. Um, and for the Sport line and the Silver line, given that it's an SAE G3000, um, it's not quite as hard of a material uh, to really stand up to that kind of abuse from those kinds of pads. Uh, so that's when our Black line, you know, comes into play. Um, this metallurgy, just so you know, was, was really developed uh, originally for a lot of the European cars. So like BMWs, Mercedes, Volkswagens. Um, because <clears throat> they tend to use pads from the factory that are abrasive. And a standard, you know, 3000 metallurgy is just not going to really take that kind of abrasion long term. Um, so then that's where this metallurgy kind of comes into play. Being a harder material, it can handle a lot more abrasion. Got it. Long term use, right? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the biggest problems I've had with one of my big brake kits is that, you know, when, uh, when I go to change pads or I need to resurface them, it's impossible to find someone locally that can turn a set of floating rotors. Right. So there's a lot, I mean, that's super advantageous if I can get away with running the black line series instead of a big brake kit. Um, but let's say I have a pretty aggressive uh, performance track pad. Mm -hmm. um, are these rotors able to be turned? Do I need any special procedure to, you know, resurface these things? Yeah, I mean, it's not something we typically recommend, but, um, you know, in a case where, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to, you know, refresh the rotor a little bit, um, you know, for, for a different pad. Um, these can be turned. Um, you just need to make sure that whoever's doing the work um, on the turning, the bit itself that they're using to, to cut the rotor needs to have a little bit of a radius on it um, because this on a lathe is what we call an interrupted cut. So, you know, the, the cutter is actually in the workpiece and then it has nothing, has no resistance. So it kind of springs back a little bit and then immediately engages the workpiece again. And so if you have a really sharp tip on that cutter, you're going to break the cutter. So it's important to have about 1 32nd radius, so nothing crazy. Um, and of course, you know, just kind of take it a little bit slower than you normally would, um, you know, with a plain face rotor. Because uh, again, you're getting that, that you know, oscillation that, that can happen as you're cutting through the rotor. But it can be turned. We do have people that have done it. So, and uh, they, did, they did fine. Fantastic. So one of the interesting things about these rotors and one of the questions that was brought to my attention when I was using them mm -hmm. was someone brought up the idea of, of surface area, right? And that reduced surface area somehow negatively affects brake performance. Okay. So yeah, that's a, that's a question that we get on occasion. Um, and I think a lot of times it kind of stems from this idea that uh, friction and surface area are associated with each other. Um, and the truth of the matter is it isn't. Um, when it comes to physics, uh, you know, when you have, you know, two, two items that are in contact with each other, um, if you reduce, you know, the surface area, your pressure goes up. And so <clears throat> it doesn't really matter so much how much surface area there is. Like if you have a small eraser versus a big eraser, the only difference is that the big eraser is going to last longer, right, than a smaller eraser. But the, the, the effect is the same. And so it's the same holds true with a brake rotor as well. Um, obviously, it's a little bit of an oversimplification, but... <laughs> just to kind of give, you know, a visual, you know, uh, idea of, of what we're talking about. The other thing too is that, you know, yes, we are reducing the mass, we are reducing the surface area, but um, we're actually increasing the surface area to volume ratio, uh, which is the relationship between how much surface area there is to the actual volume that, you know, you have. And when you increase that ratio, for the volume that you have, you have more avenues for heat to get out of the system. So um, by having these scallops, you know, not only are we essentially increasing that, that ratio, um, but we're also in inducing turbulence. So it transfers heat really well uh, compared to just a you know, typical round, round rotor. Got it. So it sounds like you're able to maintain the same level, if not higher level of friction, but you're able to actually more efficiently deal with the heat that's produced from it. Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the other advantages of this design. Uh, the slots with the scallops themselves, 
um, those are leading edges that the pad is encountering. Um, so you're always having fresh friction material engaging with the rotor. Um, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, like big brake kits, they'll have staggered pistons. So the leading edge piston is actually gonna be smaller than the rear piston. Yeah, I've heard that before. And the reason why is because as that pad is engaged uh, with the brake rotor, you're building up debris from that leading edge. And that leading edge will actually lift the back of the pad off of the rotor. So you end up with a tapered pad, um, you know, wear. So the idea is that by increasing the pressure on the rear of the pad, you're able to stabilize that and keep the pad engaged. With this design, with the leading edges, constantly keeping that clean, you're not gonna have that tapering issue and you're gonna have more clean engagement of the pad with the rotor. And that's one of the ways it makes more brake torque. Got it, wow, okay. So yeah, having the slots, I've heard of the benefits of the slotted rotors before and mm -hmm. I've experienced the difference. Sure. The one thing that is interesting and I think it's brought up quite often is, you know, where have all the drilled brake rotors go, right? And are gone and yeah, that's something that from what I understand, you guys don't offer any drilled rotors. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, we, we, we don't offer drilled rotors. We are a performance brake company. Um, and while drilled rotors do have advantages, uh, one of the biggest disadvantages of a brake rotor is lifespan. Um, you know, when you look at Porsche and you know, you're getting you know, a 911, it comes factory with cross drill rotors. However, Porsche specifically has in their, in their service manual, hey, by the way, you need to watch out for cracks between those <laughs> holes. Um, and once they get to a certain length, length, doesn't matter what the thickness is, you have to replace it because it's a safety issue. And the reason for that is that hole um, in the cross drilled rotor allows air to go through. And so it actually remains a lot cooler than all the surrounding metal. And as you know, metal, when it gets hot, it wants to expand. So all of the metal around the hole is trying to pull away and the hole wants to be the same size because it's nice and cool. And so you end up with a stress riser, a thermal stress riser between the hot metal and the cooler metal. And so over time that that'll fatigue and it'll lead to cracks, um, especially on, you know, cars that are, that are being, you know, tracked, you know, hard on the racetrack. Um, that's one of the, one of the issues, you know, a brake, a set of brake rotors in a car like that, you know, one or two races and you're done. Um, our design is gives you the performance advantages of you know those leading edges, just like what the, what the cross drills do. The difference is is that our rotors last a long time. So that's one of the things that we were trying to do, um, you know, with this design was to make it so that you know you have excellent performance, but you also have longevity to go with it. God, yeah, that makes perfect sense because I think about every every set of older eBay brake rotors that I used to have. They definitely all had cracks around the holes. So, yeah, yeah, that. Definitely wouldn't want that. So after hearing all the benefits of these rotors, mm -hmm. it sounds like there's a lot of people out there that are probably running big brake kits. You know, they spent a, a pretty penny on a really nice brake kit, probably yeah. myself, right? And they're not really getting 100% uh, benefit from that kit. They might uh, have been able to save some pennies on brakes and spent it somewhere else and gotten themselves a, a set of black line wave spec brake rotors. The, one of the really big problems that I see with a lot of big brake kits is that a lot of them don't keep the rear factory parking brake function still functional. So is there, are these things exact OEM replicas? Or will all features still be intact whenever they replace them? Yeah, so I mean, the, uh, like especially on the rears, um, you know, whether it's a drum and hat rotor, um, yes, you will be able to maintain your, your parking brake functionality um, because the drum is there and, and it's machined to the correct tolerances. Um, so you can still use your your factory parking brake for the drum and hat style and then obviously um, a lot of a lot of cars are going to an electronic parking brake so that is integrated into the caliper itself um, there are some uh, calipers like on some of the mustangs um, they have a parking brake that's integrated into the rear caliper so yeah that functionality is, is not affected by by our design perfect all right well knowing everything that we're going to do with this 350z drift car what what would be best suited for for what we're going to be doing well, I mean, a lot of times with, with drift, um, you know, most of it is, you know, trying to get the power to the ground and, and, and you know, making, making the car go sideways. So you're not really using the brakes um, a ton. Now, I know in the higher levels of drift, um, you know, when, you know, they're making 1,000, 1,200 horsepower, um, you know, you definitely need thermal capacity to, to handle, you know, you know, slowing the car down, getting it to rotate and all that sort of thing. Um, but on cars where it's, it's, it's more about, you know, the joy of drifting, uh, than it is about you know being you know in formula drift or, or the high level you know competitive events. Um, believe it or not, the sport line is actually going to be a really good fit. Um, <clears throat> you know it's got all the benefits of the design. 
um, but it doesn't have you know the higher cost that that the black line does. Um, you know, if you had a turbo kit on here or a supercharger kit on here, then we'd we'd be starting to talk about you know black lines. But if you're running you know all motor, you're doing some mods, you know you're making about 20, 30 percent more horsepower. Yeah, the sport line is going to be able to to handle that job, no problem. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Again, my pleasure. Always been a help. Yeah, we'll see you soon. All right, sounds yep. good. All right. Now, that was a conversation. Tons of great information in there. So like I said, Mike is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to anything brake related, specifically in motorsports. Just to wrap all that up, again, thank you very much Wavespec as well as Mike for coming down and spending the day with me. I appreciate you guys supporting us in our 350Z build. I know the brakes are gonna work fantastic because Mike said so, but I have tons of experience in this company and I really look forward to seeing how this turns out. And of course, shameless plug for us, if you guys are really enjoying the videos, hit like and subscribe as well as the bell button. We can't continue to do this without your support. So we appreciate it, and thanks a lot. We'll see you next episode.